Hey guys, and welcome back. Core 2, episode 7, or episode 20, if you're following the entirety of Bleach Down Your Blood War. It's just finished wrapping up, and like, I'm just amazed by everything that it offered. Like, this was about power and imagination. Like, both right then and there, and I loved it. In the beginning, we have Gwinnell Lee versus Yachu. Yachu is punching things that are imaginary in a sense that can't be seen by the naked eye, just all on impulse. And that's definitely a Kenpachi thing to do. But the whole thing about this episode is that it's imagination. And we find out later that Yachu is a figment of Kenpachi's imagination in a sense. But what I want to point out with the Gwen Lee versus Yachu do fight is that Yachu herself, like if you look at her when she's like just on impulse fighting, she's got like this life in her eyes they're like you can tell like little glimmer here and there but then when she grabs her zonpak toe like it gets soulish and she releases her shikai that says a lot because how the hell are you that that strong and your zonpak toe has a zonpak toe like I, i've never seen that before but again i know the whole thing with thousand year blood where i've read the manga but just looking at it animated and thinking about it even isane just didn't know what was going on she was like I've never seen a Zonpak toe like that. Like, it doesn't change form or nothing like that. But you get these two individuals that are copycats and they do their thing. Now, when Grimmy enters the scene, of course, you know, he takes out Yachu, making her into cookies. That's some sad ass shit, let me tell you. And of course, Rose and Kensei are dead now. No telling how the hell he killed them. I mean, I, the, the man could just imagine them dead and then that's just it. But Kenpachi coming out, let Nisani know, as you can see on the back screen right here, I pulled up this one in particular because, you know, Kenpachi's like, you can condemn me for it. I killed her. And Nisani's like, so you really took the title of Kenpachi. Now that tells me that Isane and Unahana were really close for her to reveal that because I don't think not, I don't think everybody in Soul Society knew who Unahana was. Of course, you know, Ukitake, and Shinsui knew of Unahana and what she was all about, being the first Kenpachi, that sort of sense. But I don't think everyone knew of Unahana, but they were terrified of her. So maybe they heard through the grapevine that, you know, she's actually stronger than she appears. She gives off this gentle mother look, but she's really like this beast of a, like beast of a captain if you really piss her off. And of course we saw that in the first core between Kenpachi and Unahana, but I really love this one. I really love this one between Kipachi and Sonic because he's just like, you know, just kill me if it comes down to it. And Sonic's just kind of like, no, nah. she knew what was going to become of it. Kipachi knew what was going to become of it, et cetera, et cetera. Now, going from here, going into the Kipachi versus, you know, Grimmy fight, basically monster versus monster or power versus imagination 2.0. Again, the true Stern Ritter of it. I think the things in the fight that get overlooked is the moment such as when Kenpachi gets trapped in an underwater airspace, like he jumps in air and it's like an underwater like cube that Grimmy imagined. And then Yashu falls through the crack, he goes down and saves her. And then like when the water like collides with the crack and just makes it seem like it's rainfall, like that looked fantastic. I think the studio was just cooking this entire episode and then Another big moment for me, I shouldn't even say big, like one of my favorite moments is that he brings out these guns, like these assault rifles, CGI by the way, and it doesn't look bad. Well, I think Studio Fairy has been doing great with the CGI because sometimes it's hit or miss, but this one was fantastic. Everyone's talking about the meteor, so let's talk about the meteor now. The meteor, the meteor point was great. I do like the meteor. I'm not gonna say I hate it. It is in my top two. I still won't put it above the Sasuke one, and it's not because of nostalgia or anything like that, but it is just a little bit different when Sasuke appears like a damn phantom out of nowhere, blows it away, and then he's just like, I'm him. But see, then you got Kenpachi who like slices in half and it just gets blown away. And the best thing about this one is that it shows Kitty Kenpachi, like he's excited for this. Like that's what made it in the top two. We know about Hishikai Nozarashi. I can't say it's not on par with the Sasuke one, 
But I'm telling you, like, it was an incredible moment for Bleach all around. This definitely is giving Anime of the Year vibes. Like, and we're not even done yet. We are not done with Core 2. That's what's crazy. We have so much to get through still, like, next week. So I do, I can't wait. I can't wait for more of that. And we know how the fight ends. Kenpachi pretty much beats Grimmy because he's imagining him being a stronger monster than Kenpachi. And Kenpachi's just like, you know, it is what it is. You lost by your own imagination. And that's funny coming from Kenpachi. Anyway, I think this episode was a nine and a half out of 10. Hope you guys like the video. I hope you guys like Kenpachi's Nozarashi, the Shikai, Yashi Shikai, even though no one knew what the hell was going on. Isani was even confused by it. Uh, smash that like button on the video. Tell me what your favorite moment is by commenting. Talk about it on Twitter. I'm on there as well. So follow me on there. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. I'll see you next time in the next video. Holla at your boy.